tens of millions of people's stock portfolios realized an average annual loss of more than 6% during the decade that ended in 2008. They were following traditional advice, doing everything they were told. And still, negative 6.4% per year for 10 years. I'll walk you through all the numbers and logic so that you can be better prepared as you plan for your long-term financial goals. Coming up. Welcome back, everybody. If this is your first time here, my name is Steven Spicer, and it's my goal to help you invest smarter. Now, if you're serious about finding the best solutions to provide you with the most stress-free financial future possible, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Now, over the last several videos, we've been on a quest to better understand the returns you should expect from your stock market investments. We've went from the 12% simple historical average of the S&P 500 to the 10.2% geometric average. Then we evaluated the true cost of advisor and fund fees. The industry averages there brought us down to a historically based annualized 8.7% average return. But then in our last installment, we realized that it's much more complicated than that. It's very dependent upon your unique timeline. If you're only five years out from needing your funds, preparing for a more than 10% per year loss would not be unreasonable. That's happened multiple times in the past. So adjusting your custom financial plan based on your unique timeline really matters. It can be the difference between achieving the goals you've worked so hard for and having to go back to work as a Walmart greeter just to make ends meet. Nothing wrong with that, but imagine that's not what you want for retirement. Unfortunately, it gets even more complicated. When you're not putting money into or pulling money out of your investment accounts, the order of returns doesn't matter. Put another way, if I reverse the order of every annual return since 1926 and apply it to our same $100 investment assumption that we've been revisiting throughout this series, we'll end up with the same $4.6 million 94 years later. Even though the crash of 1929 would have just happened, we would have the same simple average return of 12.1% and actual return of 10.2%. But how often is it the case that we're not contributing to or pulling from our investment accounts? Before retirement, we are presumably, or at least we would like to be, contributing to our accounts every year. During retirement, we're likely pulling from our accounts each year. During these stretches of regular contributions or withdrawals, the order of those returns actually makes an enormous difference. This is called sequence of returns risk, or just sequence risk. When adding this reality into your planning considerations, as we do with our clients, you discover that historically based, time period specific highs could be even higher, and the lows could be much lower. Meaning that negative 13.7% annualized return for our historically worst ever five year period could actually be even worse for an individual investor, depending on the specific sequence of returns and whether they just so happen to be contributing or withdrawing. Before we explore the now even more depressing worst case historically based scenario, let's evaluate a perfectly average 10 year period, 1974 through 1983. For the time being, we'll ignore the crazy inflation of that era. The real average annual return over this period was 9.1% compared to the average for all 10-year periods, historically, of 8.9%. As we explore the impact that sequence risk has on your account during periods of contributions, just at first, let's leave out all the fee assumptions. Let's look at the bottom line impact that this one simple factor can have on your success. The simple average return of these 10 years is 12.4%. If you made a $5,000 contribution at the beginning of each year for those 10 years into an account that's tracking the S&P 500, it would have grown to $110,000 at that 12.4%, excluding the fees, by the end of 1983. What if we mixed up the order of those returns? What if all the worst years were first and the best years were last? With all the other assumptions the exact same as last time, your account would now grow to $151,000. That's $41,000 
37% more over the same 10-year period with those same returns, just in a different order. That's an effective 23.09% return. Nice. That's even better than the best 10-year period in the entire S&P 500's recorded history, which was 18.4%, by the way. How is that possible? How did it go from a very plain, vanilla, average return decade to better than the best? It's because we put all our bad years first and good years at the end. But more importantly, the reason that even made a difference at all, let alone a massive one, is because you were making contributions. What happens if we put all the good years first and the bad ones last? I'm so glad you asked. Now, at the end of that same 10-year period, your account balance would only be $60,000. That's $50,000 or 45% less than you would have gotten with those same returns in their historical order. That would have dropped your actual return from 16.6% all the way down to 4.1%. That means that just because we were making contributions, the sequence of returns went from having absolutely no impact to having a massive one. Depending on the order, our actual average return, excluding any fees after 10 years, could have been anywhere from 4% all the way to 23%. That's the difference of ending up with $60,000 or $151,000 after just 10 years. And remember, these were the figures from a historically average decade. So what's the takeaway? As long as you're not contributing, you don't have to worry about this phenomenon. But aren't you contributing, or at least shouldn't you be, to your investment accounts during more of your pre-retirement adulthood than you aren't? Especially as you get closer and closer to retirement. If that's the case, your historically-based expectations need to swing much wider than discussed in these previous videos. Most importantly, factoring for an even worse, worst case. Side note, it looks as though counterintuitively you don't actually want your good return years first while you're accumulating. I guess that means you should hope for massive losses in year one. As you're approaching retirement, aren't you, shouldn't you be, more concerned about the possibility of your returns being worse than average? Let's evaluate that concept of the revised worst case expectations given our newfound grasp of sequence risk during contribution periods. The worst 10-year period in the market was from 1999 through 2008. The simple average return was only 0.7% per year. After fees and factoring for actual returns, you're already looking at a figure that's more than 3% worse than that. When you factor in our same $5,000 contribution scenario from earlier, the geometric return would have been an annualized loss of 6.4%. Sustaining an average annual 6.4% loss throughout the decade right before you plan to retire is devastating. When explaining away the lost decade, 99 through 08, Dave Ramsey says, but that's only part of the picture. In the 10-year period right before that, 1990 through 1999, the S&P 500 averaged 18% annually. Put the two decades together and you get a respectable 8% average annual return. It's simple average, by the way. Imagine you're a decade from when you'd like to retire. You design your plans based on that respectable 8% average annual return. Congrats. This is the home stretch. You can make it. You can do it. You can see the end in sight. You gotta stick to the plan. That's it. But, ah, guess what? Your account ends up averaging negative 6.4% per year, leaving you far from what you need to hit your goal. How do you feel? Is this just an ah shucks moment for you? where you whimsically think, ah, I just got unlucky? Do you take comfort in Ramsey's reminder that the previous decade yielded a return of roughly 18% per year? Stupid people. Not too shabby. I mean, that in no way affects your total now. You're still far from your goal. But hey, can't blame him or the countless others touting this same wisdom. Their math checks out. But really, so what now? Obviously, if you find yourself in this position, that math wouldn't comfort you. You were 100% on track a decade ago. You were doing so well. You were listening to the traditional advice. You were following everything that they said. You were just unlucky to hit that horrific 10-year stretch where you averaged less than negative 6% per year in your stocks. So now what? Retire on less? Retire later? That's what most people do. 
who kind of left it up to chance and find themselves in this position. The bottom line is, if you're in your 50s, trying to intelligently get yourself into a position where you can retire, no matter what happens, this, hope we get one of those better than average decades strategy, would be imprudent and irresponsible. And in that same vein, this, you should expect to average X percent per year in the market, becomes meaningless noise. Yet, this is the advice advisors continue to give. They, too, hoping that the coming years bring solid returns. Because if they don't, as they inevitably sometimes won't, advisors lose clients. Frustrated, after facing such a devastating reality, people fire their advisors and move on to the next one. Sadly, odds are that the new advisor was offering the exact same advice as the previous one a decade prior and continues to offer the same type of advice today. Because that's just how it's done in the industry, by professionals, pundits, and academics alike. I invite and implore you, with all the content we're putting out there now, to challenge that traditional investment paradigm. Just at least leave yourself open to it. Oxford defines gambling as taking risky action in the hope of a desired result. How is this different? You've been sold the desired result, not the potential reality. Stop gambling. Stop taking risky action in the hope of hitting your financial goals. Ultimately, as you've seen here thus far in this series, and will become even more convinced of in the series we have lined up for you next, that's what the mainstream advice is pushing you toward. Risky action and just hope. And don't worry, we'll get to some potential solutions, some better strategies. Just don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell because we have a lot to cover as we challenge an entire industry. But before we get to all that, we're going to continue that comprehensive exploration of what kind of returns you should expect from the stock market. Because we're not done. Close. Not quite. When you start to enter retirement, and we're talking about planning withdrawals, this reality gets even worse. I hope to see you there. Until then, I wish you all the best. Take care.